Alright guys, after three years of wanting to build me a garden shed, I finally got around to building me a 10 by 12 garden shed. And as you've seen in the beginning, I was welding up my framework. And that's out of an old trampoline frames. And we'll take a closer look at that in the inside. But right now, I don't have no electricity out here. So I'm going to take the solar powered lamp that I had in my greenhouse because I wasn't using it in the greenhouse like I thought I would. And plus, eventually, I'm going to get the electricity run all the way out here to this shed. But for the meantime, I'm going to put this solar powered lamp right up on this shed and get it hooked up so I have some light in there. Now, with the door open, it's actually light enough, but when I'm getting half blind and trying to look for something little in them boxes, but that's where my irrigation supplies and my water and stuff for my rabbits and quails, and I get in there trying to look for something, I need some light. So I'm finna hook this solar powered lamp up. You guys, I've had this, I know, over a year, and I also have one in my shed that I use when I need a bright light. And this thing has really been working well. I just don't use it as much in the greenhouse. So I'm gonna put it on my shed today. Now with everything I got, I like to give updates on it. So this is my update on this solar light. And then we're gonna look at some other solar lights that I've had for over a year or so. And I'm gonna give y'all update on them. But the quick update on all of them, everything I got still working and still working good. Now, now did y'all see me just walk up there with this light and go mount the light on the outside of the shed? <laughs> <coughs> It might work a little better with the solar panel on the outside of the shed and the light in the inside. Now, it's an old overcast, dreary, drizzly day, so I don't know if my light's going to come on today. It depends on if it was still charged or not. But now we're going to move in and put the light in the inside where it's supposed to go. So before we go in the shed, I'm going to show y'all the outside of the shed. And guys, I built this 10 by 12 garden shed here for $400. But I used framing off of trampoline frames as the framework that I collected. Old trampolines. I collected an old door from somewhere. I had two 4 by 4s Probably left over three years ago when I built the pool deck. So all I bought was the tin and the screws. But here locally where I live, we had a metal prefabbing shop. And you can go up there and buy what you call seconds. But you can't get the picky colors. So you see mine's black and brown. Now I am going to paint the front because I want to paint the door and stuff. Which that's a metal door that ain't no wood door. I'm going to paint the front all black. That way the whole shed will be blacked out. out. Now for my garden shed, I didn't want no doorknob or nothing on it. I might put a lock if I ever need to go out of town. But a hasp lock or something. But I just like the old twist wood handle. 
and we'll bring y'all inside and see how the frame work and all worked out. But the way the frame work on a trampoline curves, and then I put five foot, and that's the post that was on the trampoline. I just had to weld a couple pieces together to get my five foot height on the sides for my head height. And you start out with your 10, 12 foot long, running it long ways and just screw it and just work your way right over the top. And it's just so simple. I had my nephew come help me put that on there. It didn't take us probably 40 minutes to get all the 10 screwed on over it and that end. And I finished this in another day by myself. You gonna notice up here on the top, on this end, I used black and run them little pieces up and down. And the reason I did that, I didn't want to waste a whole sheet of tin just to cut that little half moon out of, like I done on the other end. And I had them pieces left over, and I said, well, when I paint all that, you won't never know it. But as you come in, you see I just used three trampoline, built my rafters, if you want to call them that. It's actually the post and the rafters. And they are approximately five and a half foot between them, five foot between them, five foot three, something like that. And that's sturdy enough on this heavy duty building. I promise you, this building here blows away. I'm gonna have more to be concerned about than the garden shed. But you can see I had another old table there built me a good shelf out of. The way I can store under it. Now on the bottom, all I did was built the ground up about four inches so water couldn't come in here and then put that ground fabric over it. So it's kind of a dirt floor. You can see how much storage I got. And then I got, I'm saying $400. I forgot I did buy six two before to build me a shelf here. Cause I had some shelving that I'd collected from somewhere somebody was throwing away. So I did buy six two before's in order to build some shelving supports. And around on this side, another shelf. So you can see, you can put a, Put a lot of stuff in here, and I got it to where I can walk in here and get anything I want while I had to move something else. Got my big chicken plucker in here. Got that out of my shed, out of my way. Quail plucker. Generator can sit out here. So it turned out pretty nice. So now we just been to hang this light right here on this center beam. I think I'm gonna just use zip ties. And y'all can see I'm standing on my tiptoes to reach the peak of this shed. So that's about eight foot three inches. Eight foot, something like that. Plenty tall enough. Let's hook the little wire up and see if our light happens to be charged any because it ain't gonna get no charging today. If I didn't leave it on last time in the greenhouse, the light charges up itself. What it does. Let's see. You got a remote control to turn it on and off. It ain't got much charge, guys. It's dim, but it ain't got much yard light. It don't have much charge. It'd be bright, bright, bright. So I had to show y'all another day of how bright that light gets. Now I'm gonna take the cord and zip tie it up here out of the way. And that's pretty good. And that will light this 10 by 12 shed up brightly. 
even with the door closed when the battery's charged up. Even though the sun ain't shining, guys, y'all can see it's an overcast day. Even though it's no sun shining, it's still charging this light a little charge. As the light charges, more lights will be lit up. But these are some handy lights when you somewhere you ain't got electricity. And I'm gonna tell you something else about these lights. And I debated on putting it in my chicken house. If you have a chicken house that you don't have no electricity to. Now, I ain't doing it this winter, but a few winters before I would turn the light on and let it keep the daylight hours longer or the light hours longer for the chickens to get more eggs. With this one here, you can set it to auto. Then you got a three hour, five hour, and an eight hour. Well, where I live, that three hour is pretty much perfect. Once it gets dark, that light will automatically come on and stay on for three hours and then go off. That way your chickens is get, getting a good 12 to 14 hours of daylight and they continue to lay eggs better. So these lights are good for your chicken pens also. But as with everything, if you're interested in a light like this, I actually put the description in the link below this video so you can go click on it and look at this light and check it out if you so choose to. Guys, here's one of the solar street lights. I don't know which brand this is. I'll have to look back to see. Right here on the end of my carport. And it's motion activated. It'll come on at dusk. And it'll come on real dim, but then somebody comes up, it's motion activated to where it'll turn on bright. That's how I got it set. It has a remote control for it, but once I set it the way I wanted it, it's never been changed. This one here has been up over a year, no issues. This one out here was actually the first one I got. And it's the same way. It ain't near about as bright as that one on my carport. But it's bright enough that it's the same thing. It comes on like a dim light at dusk. And then we walk out of here, it turns to bright. And it brightens up enough in that shed that at night I can walk out here and get something with it hanging on the end like that. Again, these lights have been over a year. This here may be two years. I've had no issues with them whatsoever. But like I said, they got remotes, but once I got them set the way I wanted them, put the remotes in the shed, and I don't never fool with them. Now, I got one more that I done a video on, but it's at my mom's house. Same thing, no issues. They've been working. And I was kind of leery of this new solar panel stuff, but it's kind of nice when you don't have electricity. Y'all see I got lights and wires why I didn't run a cord out here back in the day. But when you ain't got no electricity, you get one of them, then it don't cost you nothing. From then on, you got a light. Even these little motion-activated solar lights I got. I've hung these things up, guys, and they, I've had no issues out of none of them. Now, these is motion-activated. They just come on, and I got them randomly set around different places where I walk around anywhere my place, the light will click on and I can see. I ain't got to carry no flashlight to go anywhere around my place. I walk around, the light gonna come on somewhere. <laughs> now, another one that I just love, that's my own for you. I remember the brand a bit. That's more than just a light, but it's not solar powered. It runs off electricity. But that's a camera and light. It's recording right now, and you get download an app on your phone. And I can actually be in the house, and somebody walk up, and I can punch a button and talk to them through this microphone on there. And it's recording, or I can snap a picture of them. Even though I have security cameras up around the place, that there's a, a very handy light that if you don't have a security camera, because this one, no matter where I'm at, I can look on my phone if somebody comes to the house when I ain't here. But guys, I am so proud of my shed. 
Now that I got this all out of here, that's stored in my other sheds, I done done a cleaning in my shed and reorganized, and then I got my lean to all my tractor sheds set up to where it's just my lawn mowing and lawn mowers, weed eaters, and everything to do with my yard mowing business is all out there in one spot. And I knew what it was gonna do. I'd just been putting it off and ain't never done it. Now over here in these two boxes, this was my garden boxes. This is just hand tools and such and my pump up sprayers. That little box over there, that Devor box, that's been the handiest thing. Cause now guys, it's got all of my fertilizers in it. Keep them good and dry. That way if something spills, it's not in here getting on anything else causing it to rust. Cause if you spill any kind of fertilizers on any of your tools or something, it's gonna eat them up and corrode them. So to all my fertilizers is in one box, the v -Boy box. And then my hand tools, and like I said, my pump up sprayer and my fertilized injector that's made for my underground injection. I can store it here during the winter. So now I got all kind of room. I still got this here. This is a stainless steel metal box I got off of a job site. This is where I got the hand tools. Little hand tools, hammers. Shears, stuff like that to where I ain't even got to open the door to go in the shed. I can just open them up, get them, use them, walk by here, open the door and throw them back in there. Since I already had that, I said, well, I'll just utilize that. And that's something else I ain't filling my shed up with. But guys, I'm going to build you a good, cheap shed. Start collecting you some trampoline frames. When I've got them frames welded up, like I said, it's just three of them. That heavy-duty gauge metal, that's close enough together five foot for down here because we don't get no heavy snows to where it's going to collapse or anything. I got up there, I weigh 180 pounds, and I got up on top of it, and it don't try to give over anything. And standing them up, I just drove some rods in the ground, set the framework down over it, got them leveled up. I had to use me some stakes and all that. I was doing that part by myself. But I got it all leveled up, and once you start with that first sheet, then you can keep it level as you go, each one of them. And just wrap right around the top. But that's my $400 garden shed that I'm so proud of. And I hope that gives y'all some ideas what all you can do with trampoline frames. Actually, when I first started collecting them years ago, I was going to build a greenhouse out of them. Then I got to thinking, well, I'd rather build a greenhouse out of the cow panel style. If you ain't seen that video, I'll attach it above so you can go back and watch it. I actually got a full video of building it from start to finish. Then I said, well, I'll save these trampoline frames to do other stuff with and build me a garden shed one day. <coughs> and they work out great for that. As they do with other things. All them frames right there under my rabbit cages and quail cages. You can see I use legs off of them trampolines and weld them up. Made stands to set cages on. That way they don't rot. So you can do all kinds of things with trampolines. And also, the guys, this here is something that's handy and convenient and easy to make. Get this wagon out of the way. This back here was years ago a hunting stand, deer stand on skids. It's it's watertight and mouse tight, so that's where now I'm storing my hay and my feeds and stuff. But after I done that, I had this leaf catcher, and I said, "Well, I don't want that up there in my lawn mower and stuff. That's another spot I can mark park one of the lawn mowers or the go kart." So I took a cow panel here and just bowed it over and then took some little metal straps which just of course each end is cut and stuck in the ground good got some little straps right here screwed it to this wood 
feed house and I had a little tarp fit right over it and I put that tarp on but y'all know tarps unless you get a sure enough expensive heavy duty tarp it ain't gonna last you one summer car the UVs are gonna disintegrate but this here's construction ground fabric that I happen to have I said you know I was thinking I said I'll put a layer of that over the top of that tarp because this the UV this here will be here for I bet I can get five years out of it before it starts tearing apart, if not longer. I know I used it on them two raised beds around there and they still good. But that makes a handy little storage. Like I said, I back my leaf catcher under there. Got my tiller stuck under there and then I made a shelf and I got a box. That's my planting trees, so I ain't gotta have them in the greenhouse in my way. And that box has got other supplies like heat mats and stuff like that that I use in the greenhouse. See, now I got storage that gets that all out of my greenhouse to where I got more room. Let me give y'all a sneak peek at my greenhouse. Two tomatoes. And guys, I ain't been running the heater like I should. I mean, it's been getting down in the 40s some nights. But you can see they're still making blooms. But I was looking while I go. I do have a couple of tomatoes here done set, making little tomatoes. But if I'd have been running the heater, it would have done better. But they was all the way up, done growing, touching the ceiling. And now they're falling over, which is all I'm going to let them do is just fall over. And this other variety right here, I think it's the Florida 91. See, it's done got three tomatoes set right there. But it must be more of a determinant because it ain't getting very tall. Got some more blooms on it. And some of the blooms didn't set and make fruit because I didn't keep it warming up in here. Because we actually got colder nights than we normally do this year early. Now, the other stuff in here ain't doing so great. I ain't been fooling with it. Cucumbers, I don't think it's going to make it because it's just too cold for it. I'd have to run the heater too much to try to do that little experiment. But the cabbage and the cauliflower, is, it probably needs fed and stuff, but I just ain't been, ain't been fooling with them. Been trying to do too much other stuff. But my tomatoes is my main thing I want to play with this winter and see if I can get a fresh tomato about January or something. Done built me a walk-in chicken pen on this end down here for my breast chickens. I had this dog pen here. So I has an old tin here and that's And that, again, guys, is made out of the legs off of one of them trampolines. They made me a chicken coop, if you want to call it that, where I can step in here and get the leg, uh, step in here and get the eggs, because these are going to be the chickens that I'm going to be hatching eggs. They'll be, as soon as the spring starts coming in, they'll be laying eggs. They got at the age right now of, to lay eggs, but it's at the time of the year, the days are so short, so I ain't expecting to get no eggs until spring starts coming. But that's the American breast. And I'll be breeding and hatching these. Along with three more, I got another rooster and two hens from another bloodline and another pen I'm flying crossing. So see if I can get some Better standard of perfection birds out of the breast. I want some darker legs, wider ears, keep the meat. They're curious. They're like, what are you doing now? You just come out here and erupted our home a couple of days ago. Now what you up to? Well, guys, I thought I'd bring y'all along today when I was putting up the light. Let y'all see my little garden building. And if, if you ain't never subscribed to my channel and come across this channel, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you a thing. 
And guys, a lot of my viewers that watches regularly, I need to get y'all to start giving me some thumbs up. I got 17,000 something subscribers, but I ain't averaging around 300 views per video. So to help get the algorithm up on YouTube, I need some thumbs up and some comments. And I sure appreciate y'all if y'all do that. But guys, I hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week. God bless. See y'all next time.